Hello everyone, this is Kat, and welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be reviewing the Born Free pack and the Steelfang vehicle that comes with it. We're going to be looking a bit at the value and the overall usability of the parts, as well as some of the new stuff that is included with it. So, to get into it, the Steel, uh, Born Free pack is a new pack that goes in for 16 euros. You get 800 coins alongside with it, and you get, of course, this vehicle, which includes one epic auto cannon called Jewel, and uh, as well as the uh, Golden Eagle engine, which was previously, it is it was already obtainable, it was already in the game, uh, but, well, you couldn't really get it uh, up until now, uh, ever since the Born to Fly pack got removed from the store. So, it's kind of nice to see the Golden Eagle uh, return. Uh, it's not really that valuable. Um, I have to double check here um, uh, in the hardware start part. But the Golden Eagle goes for about 200, so that is less than an average Epic. So yeah, indeed, it wasn't that much value. But overall, adding up all the parts of this uh, build in the current market on the PC using uh, Euros as conversion rate, uh, in terms of uh, what you pay for it. So, like, when you're in America using dollars, it might be different. If you're on a console, it will very much be different. But adding the value of all these parts, so the paints, the gun, the engine, the cabin, the four wheels, and the exhaust twos, uh, plus the 800 coins you get alongside with it, you come out at 2,850 uh, coins for this total pack value. Give or take, might be like 20 or plus or less, uh, rough estimate pretty much. But if you compare that to uh, currently to the amount of coins you get by buying packs, uh, with the, the cheapest option, you only get half the amount of coins and the entire times of uh, euro cents you're uh, paying. And even with the best value, um, you only get three quarters. With this one, you get about one and a half times the current value. So right now, it is pretty damn valuable. I, however, uh, because Crossroad DB is down, I had to uh, actually hand calculate this. So I do not have exact numbers. For example, the Eric Navodio pack is a really a famous one. And probably the uh, rather new uh, <laughs> other packs uh, also have high value. But this one has pretty decent value for a price of only 16 euros. So it's not too bad. However, of course, um, which is something I'm going to address later. It's just yet another pack, and again, we're going to address that later in the video. So that said, what does this vehicle actually bring? So as I said, uh, we got the new auto cannon, and auto cannons generally in uh, the game aren't that good. So we're really going to have to see whether this one will be performing better than the uh, normal craftable counterparts. Then we got the Wyvern Medium Cabin. It's not really too exciting, but it's a decent cabin overall. Generally, you will sell this one to get a growl if you're a new player. Then we got the Golden en uh, Eagle Engine, which is a pretty good option for budget e-players, because again, it's 100 coins cheaper than the normal craftable engines, because there was such a large influx of them back in the day after... Um, it's actually a really funny story. Like, the Born to Fly was one of the ways you could get into close beta. You had to buy the pack, and it was the cheapest option you had. So if you wanted to play this game, most players bought the, that pack. Back then, however, it did not yet include this Golden Eagle engine. The, later got, the pack got later changed to include the Golden Eagle, and that was when the uh, open beta started. However, everyone that had bought the pack in close beta received it when the open beta started. So there was a huge amount of players that had this pack, and because of that, there was a huge amount of Golden Eagle engines. And with that, the price pretty much plummeted. That's that one thing I do like, is that the fact that these uh, steering uh, these wheels are all steering. So you have a use for pretty much all of them. Racing wheels, that said, are not the greatest. Generally, if you're gonna go for rare wheels, you're either gonna be using uh, the twin wheels, maybe large wheels, although those place is taken by the Bigfoot in general, or APC wheels because of the damage resistance. Another cringe use uh, comes with the shift wheels because they do damage, and the Chitelli wheels because of their um, suspension system. That's it. Uh, they're decent wheels overall, and can definitely gonna help you out as a starting player, although do watch your power score since these are 75 
compared to medium wheels, only 40 uh, per wheel. So you actually add 35 extra power score, almost double the power score per wheel. And it's gonna quickly add up, even just with these four, to 140 power score and it will change your, it can actually change um, your matchmaking sometimes. Uh, in terms of decor, we only got these pair of exhausts. Uh, nothing too exciting, only 4% extra uh, reputation bonus. Uh, but we do got some interesting new uh, stickers right here. The no step and this uh, shark mouth sticker. And then of course we got these uh, air intakes, which are actually open up on the <laughs> rear end. And we got this air splitter, which is a pretty nice uh, bumper if you want to build a Formula One race car. And of course, these are pretty useful if you want to be uh, using the sides of a race car. And I'm going to double check whether these are actually obtainable anywhere with the current factions. I am not quite sure. Those are poly parts, Nomads, fire to the Corrida parts. And actually, yeah, here it is, air splitter left side intake and right side air intake. So if you want to get them, you're going to have to get up to prestige level 30 uh, with your nomads and then grind your prestige levels to get those um, extra armor parts. It is a bit random. You might actually end up getting the other parts of there, uh, theirs, uh, which are the Corita parts. So it's going to take you a while to unlock these, but you can obtain them without actually paying for them. Unlike the armor parts of the pandemic, but that's again another story for another time. Those still haven't been featured in the factions and are currently the only fully unobtainable parts in the game uh, if you did not buy the pack. It's a bit of a bummer. Overall, let's go in into the other parts in this build. Uh, so back to part uh, five pack. We got uh, the, again, the air intakes. Uh, we got a pair of Avia fenders, which are pretty nice. We got a total of nine light two by four frames, which is also pretty nice. But other than that, maybe, okay, the twin blade wings are decent. These armor parts are not too interesting. Generally, there are like low level uh, uh, parts that you can obtain with the nomads as well, or they're pretty much parts that you never want to use, such as these oblique slope narrows. The amount of times you actually use those things are pretty slim. So that's it. Let's uh, actually check the performance of this thing. So. 50 parts of uh, uh, 80 parts shoes in my case, but it does raise uh, your part limits to 55 if you buy it. There's only 649 durability, which is rather low for a vehicle at uh, 2.7 tons power square. You're at least want to have 800 to 900 there. Uh, its mass is 3.8 tons, pretty decent. You have energy to play with, so even it's a basic player, if you don't want to change the look of this vehicle that much, but you do want to like improve your chance of actually doing something. Like the least thing you can do is stick a uh, core machine gun in the front and on the back, and then pretty much like attack people from sort of this angle, and like do drive-bys. Since this, um, that's actually something to go in, but the gun actually has a perk that benefits this uh, drive-by tactic. So, this is the least thing you're going to be doing if you want to take modifications. Add two cores, and you'll be at 10 energy. So that said, let's get into the gun. The dual auto cannon has a four energy drain uh, in total, which is low on the low end. For an epic, most of the time you're at five or six energy uh, drain, except for things like equalizer, machine guns, etc. And with that, it's equal to the repair. So this really is an upgrade to the repair rather than an alternative to the royal rend. And uh, that uh, lower power score in comparison also um, signifies that and the smaller hitbox than the whirlwind with the whirlwind of course being a gigantic gun it's definitely nice to have a bit of a smaller one mass 240 kilograms and its perk is weapon heating while firing slows down as your movement speed increases maximum heating reduction is 25 percent at 80 kilometers an hour with that uh, see, uh seeing that this thing's max speed is 86 kilometers an hour you can actually make use of that perk. So if we try to accelerate in a straight line, we can, you see you definitely hit that 80 kilometers an hour. And even if you're twisting around a little bit, you're pretty much always at the higher speeds of 60 plus kilometers an hour. With that, you definitely will notice the fact that you can actually like um, overheat uh, less quickly and then you can fire for a much longer period of time because I really see it bottom down uh, that I will go down to 22% uh, when I'm really turning. But unless you're really doing like a full 180 turn, you really won't go underneath that 25, uh, the 20%. And 
20% heat is actually quite drastic. That said, we have the other uh, big issue then. You can see when we're moving, we actually do not have perfect accuracy. Only if we stand still is when the accuracy, uh, accuracy really converges. Because of that, the perk doesn't really play well with the nature of autocannons, which is slightly of a bummer. But that said, let's do some more testing in terms of damage. So for that, we're going to compare it to a real wind, which I'm just going to stick on the back end. And for that, I will actually have to remove the um, card jack there. And of course, we do have to set them on two different buttons. So the real wind is going to be on the second button. Our first test is going to be at pretty much point blank at, against one of these targets, because those, of course, are direct cabins and those uh, leave the least amount of variation. Also, you can see how much more accuracy the uh, whirlwind has compared to the... Uh, I actually forgot the name of this thing. Of this gun. The jewel. Not going to forget this time. Sorry, guys. So, the jewel has less accuracy than the whirlwind, which further uh, decreases its efficiency at range, which where these guns generally shine. And definitely feels more like uh, a cyclone in that regard. Which is our cycle, I also want to be firing for a long time. So at point blank, the jewel do, does 13 damage per shot. With the whirlwind doing 15 damage per shot. Of course, we have to calculate into uh, like the fact that the uh, whirlwind takes up a full extra energy point. So uh, if we go to 12 uh, and 16 damage in comparison, so like one down on a jewel and one up on the whirlwind, you would say that you have... Um, uh, three quarters, uh, like three damage per single energy point on the jewel, and you have actually yeah, when you uh, only down the damage of the jewel by one, you actually have three energy on, per damage on the whirlwind as well. So point blank, you're actually the jewel does outperform the whirlwind, as you guys can see there. And of course, you do have the explosive effect, which uh, makes it easier for you to damage adjacent parts. As you guys can see here, even when not hitting the actual parts, you can still blow it up with the explosive damage. Which can further enhance these damage weapons outputs. But that said, let's uh, bring up a little bit of a further away target. Which is going to be this big truck. I got to be figuring out some good damage hits. Here, here we go, 13. You can definitely see the 13 damage hits, and but do the the inaccuracy, I'm not actually really able to accurate, uh, like accurately test this damage. But at this point, you already can see the whirlwind already does 70, 20 even. It deals higher amounts of damage, definitely. So at even just 100 meters, the whirlwind will start to outperform the jewel in terms of damage output. But of course, you do have the large hitbox to take into consideration. And the fact that uh, this gun definitely loses less accuracy than... Uh, the whirlwind, in comparison, they, bo uh, they both pretty much have equal inaccuracy when actually firing on the move, you guys can see. But the jewel but definitely uh, can fire for a way longer period of time. And it has a higher rate of fire, as you guys can see here. Let's do uh, put it uh, in comparison one more time. Boom. You can see that the jewel has a higher rate of fire, which further again enhances the damage output of the jewel and i would say up to or again around 100 meters then the whirlwind starts to deal more damage thanks to its perk that's about the effective range of this gun so if you're compared to this sign here this is about the range you want to be in with a jewel and because at f ranges further than this your accuracy starts to uh, hurt you and you won't be really uh, able to hit <laughs> even the broadside of a bar with it so it really benefits you for getting closer. And then the question arises, how it performs against things like uh, a simple, uh, where is it? Spectre, there we go. Since of course the Spectre, uh, with its uh, pretty much same niche, being medi at medium range, which one is gonna be your preferred weapon? Of course, uh, the jewel is going to be explosive, can damage multiple parts at once, um, and has a better accuracy than the machine gun. The machine gun is hit scan, so you do not have to lead your target anymore. It's going to be you're going to have a bit easier time just burst firing away, 
compared to this gun. So, let's again, let's take it as target. Gonna shoot at the top of this cabin here. And we're gonna up to get 25 damage numbers. And here you can get 28 damage numbers, but at a lower rate as these numbers. So, damage is gonna be pretty similar. But with the machine gun, you're gonna have to be aiming a bit better. And of course, you do not get the explosive, so the jewel can actually outdamage a spectre. Which is actually kind of nice to see here. Again, it's all pretty much theory. It's not combat testing, etc. So that might actually all change. And uh, that's it. Let's just put it back together real quick. And go into how I would actually improve this build if I would actually do just basic changes for a new player. First thing I would do is remove the car jack and these four little parts there. They pretty much have no use. Uh, you can move the cabin uh, forward because of it, and that would be pretty nice. Or you can actually uh, decide to move the cabin back f way further. And uh, you probably have, uh, if you're at least some levels uh, into this game, you will, should have the uh, buggy floor. And we probably should be able to uh, place the gun here. And while you actually do get some yeah, you get uh, it's a pretty significant firing angle restriction in the front, so that's, this actually is not something that you would work out. So, then in that case, yes, you would actually move the um, cabin up to the front. So you get room in the back. And you go grab that uh, jewel gun, if I can actually find it in my inventory. And you probably either want to place it on the Golden Eagle, which, is, which has 400 durability. Or you want to actually place it somewhere in the back. Because, well, sadly, this cabin really doesn't have any good connection points. And it really hurts the build overall. So again, with the budget that you have, I do suggest getting yourself a very simple growl cabin. With a growl cabin, mounting it on top means that the gun is uh, down by one block. Slightly lowers your center of gravity, which makes it less likely for you to flip, and it still looks kind of decent with the golden engine in front. So that's that. Uh, we also get an extra energy point, meaning that we have uh, a total of six energy points to spend now. And then uh, at medium range, you really do not want to use any other auto cannons. So what I would advise, either getting yourself some equalizers, because those really want to be firing for a long time as well, similar to uh, this weapon. Or get some uh, machine gun specters or vectors. And in this case, I would actually advise the vectors since they have, of course, lower energy usage, which means you can actually mount all three guns at the same time. And with how this thing is overall layout uh, done, you can actually place them at a pretty secure spot. Although this will limit your firing angles. Again, you have a lot of options. You can otherwise just put a gun in the front. Another option is moving these air intakes forward and using these smaller parts, the small buggy floors, instead of the large one. Get a wide pl uh, platform and get them next to each other. Of course, you can fill up the entire rear uh, even further. But overall, this is going to be quite a decent performing weapon uh, platform. You'll really be doing drive-bys a lot, so you'll be doing that, and then turning around, and then continuing to fire. I hope you guys can drive better than I can, at least, and not hit some random wall. So that's that. I cannot really advise full firing these weapons. Just do burst fire like I'm doing right now. And you'll probably do best in terms of firing accuracy. As you can see, as long as you're uh, moving at least at a decent speed, the guns will heat up at pretty much same speed. So that's something nice as well. So that all it leaves just armoring up the build a little bit more. So one thing that is going to be noticing here is actually this front area. You get some connection points up the front top. And if you can just put some random armor piece in front, even if you just like put the blade wings in there, they will not look good at all. But at least put some protection in the front here because you do not want every single hit to go into your engine because you will lose it very, very quickly. Also, watch your power score, of course. We are already at 3,500. Uh, so in terms of low-level stuff, 
it isn't really too much that you have to work with, but even just like some running board, it gives you at least one decent hit protection. And then we of course have the air intakes. You can move them to right here and they kind of act as fenders for the wheels, which is kind of cool. But you definitely want to look at how you want to sort out your armor. I'm not going to do that entirely in this video, otherwise this video will get way too long. Uh, but definitely consider rechanging and reconfiguring the armor uh, profile of this vehicle. If you guys do want to see a video of me changing up the armor of this thing, comment down below and I will consider it if I have enough time. Of course with my uh, college uh, work and everything, I am really, really busy and well, I've, as you guys noticed, I will be able to put out as many videos as always. So that's that, we're gonna go on to the final topic. The current state of the game and why there are so many packs coming in. And while well, I do not want to go into this too deeply because it's kind of a controversial topic, I just feel that the developers um, are kind of running out of money. Player base is getting smaller, there's no way around, uh, we're not gonna lie against ourselves. And they still need the income to um, keep the server running. Of course, you can play this game for free if you want to, but you will not get that far. Uh, but by spending money, you will support the developers and keep this game running overall. So, uh, well, because a lot of people don't realize, well, we pay the developers in only single purchases, they have to pay the server hosts and their people in a at a monthly basis. So once the amount of new players starts to go down, the amount of money coming in also goes down and they'll have to find another way. And I guess we have to be happy that they're not yet have implemented any real overpowered weapons because I mean, the flamethrowers, while they're really cool, they're definitely not that powerful. They have very short range, not at limits. Border free might be an auto cannon that you're using right there, but it's still just an auto cannon. And whatever, like whatever you're you're gonna go and tell to me, auto cannons still underperform in the overall meta. That's it. That's really all I can say about it. Like I cannot say or whether I blame them for putting in so many packs, because of course. The reason for the players uh, like uh, drying up is, of course, with the developers. But it's just some food for thought. I'm not going to say you should think they are wrong with doing this or uh, I'm not also not defending them. Just take it in consideration next time you log in and you get a uh, pop-up about, ooh, this is a new pack. Don't get angry about it. Like, it's just what happens here. That's it. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. See you guys!